Good morning. Welcome to Terra at Home. I'm here with Jillian Love, my pal here at the LCBO Millcroft location in Burlington. And we're in the heart of summer and we want to talk about all the great options for drinks. And lots of great options. Lots of good stuff. Cider has really taken off yes, now, right? Yes, it's becoming very, very trendy. And mm -hmm. people tend to forget that cider was one of the first original drinks I know. ever made back then. Yes. You know, and it was made quite poorly, I'm sure. But back mm -hmm. from the 18th century, you're even... Uh, before that. Sure. Um, it's making a new comeback now, mm -hmm. better than ever. Um, there's so many nice cider houses in Ontario, specifically it's gone from two all the way to 12 now. Mm -hmm. So really trending up and it's probably our number one fastest growing category That's through North day. America. All of a sudden it just... So just fantastic. There's dry ciders, especially. Sure. Mm -hmm. There's sweet ciders. There's flavored ciders. There's pear ciders, raspberry. There's all kinds of different flavor profiles for mm -hmm. every palate. Mm -hmm. so and North even Alexander Keith's now has a cider. Yeah, Keith's has come up with mm -hmm. a wonderful cider that's very dry, mm -hmm. um, really crisp, great with barbecues. So anything you would match beer with, mm -hmm. you can have, you know, the Alexander Keith cider. If you're doing barbecues, if you're having just beers and burgers, it's perfect. Well, that's to, the thing, because not substitute. everybody likes beer. And there no. are other, you know, as much as there are women who do drink beer, um, you know, some some would rather stay away from it, but they still like something. It's close, but it's not. Right, so. it's still crisp and carbonated like right. beer, but it's made with apples. And sure. the nice thing about these ciders is they're locally grown apples. They mm -hmm. usually run five or six different locally grown apples in each cider, so it's great for the economy for mm -hmm. Ontario. Yes. Uh, the apples are, you know, natural. Everything's natural, gluten-free, a lot of the ciders, which yes, is another good tip. Yes, that's what I have heard that, so that's yeah. good. Mm -hmm. okay. So what I wanted to do um, is focus on making a drink with cider. And you that's a cool part, so you can make cocktails. Yeah, you can make well. cocktails. Great. With anything, you can make a cocktail. You can make a cocktail with wine. I know. Well, last I, before, I, we, we've made cocktails with beer, and so once we did that, I'm like, oh, you can. You can make it with anything. Yes, you right? sure can. So right. we're going to make a nice cocktail with cider. Okay. So we're going to use the Thornberry cider today, mm -hmm. and that's a uh, dry cider. Mm -hmm. We're going to use um, the Domaine Canton. It's a French ginger liqueur, which is very interesting, very good for you. Mm -hmm. Help with the, you know, yes, digestion. digestion. So, yes. we, so we're making a very simple drink. So we're going to use three ounces of cider. Okay. We're going to do a little bit of lime, like a little quarter, or sorry, the ginger. The ginger, the yes. The ginger liqueur. Yes. I've been making a lot of drinks with lime. Like yes, I, had that I can imagine. And then the lot. orange juice. Okay. And then you can garnish with a little bit of uh, leave or mint sprig or whatever you like to do. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. A really How easy, easy backyard though, right? drink. And this ginger liqueur is to die for. It's really lovely. I like it actually comes with a whole little booklet of yeah. recipes. Too. It's a cognac based. Okay. So it's just like Grand Marnier, only yes. it's with uh, ginger, mm, which is really that. nice. Okay, that's great. So that's our drink with, with ciders. So there's lots of things you can okay, do. Okay, so that's the thing. Ciders? Run the whole gamut, all kinds. Try them and see which one you like, right? Yes, because as you say, pear, apple, all different kinds. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now going over, and of course, as we've seen over the years, the craft breweries and and, and that really have have really grown as well. Yes, craft beer. The the craft beer people that own the brewery, the breweries are so passionate. It's made with such love, such mm -hmm. such passion, mm -hmm. and they're all done in little artisanal places that are just exploding yes. and expanding. It's so nice to see. It is. Um, they come into the LCBO and introduce themselves to us, and we always love to promote craft beers because they're just they're wonderful people, mm -hmm. very passionate about what they do. So what I suggest to people in the middle of the summer, you you tend to go and buy your regular beer. Mm -hmm. So try another spin on it. And I always say pick six beers. Yes. Pick six craft beers, something a little different yep. that you wouldn't normally buy. Mm -hmm. um, I suggest a lager, an ale, maybe a flavored one, mm -hmm. um, something maybe a darker Bach type beer. Sure. So what I've done is mm -hmm. I've picked six beers that okay. I think would be a great choice if you're entertaining and if you're having a few friends over that they can kind of pick yep. and have a good time. I uh, find people really enjoy that. I, I don't even really drink beer myself, but I buy all kinds of different beers and people love it. It's like yeah, a party. When they variety. come to my house, they're going through my fridge. I know, but it's I know. Fun, it's right? fun. And then you can maybe find something new that you like. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So this one here, the first one is um, Grand River Brewing. It's a t it's called Tailgate. Mm -hmm. Brand new this Cute. summer. So we're gonna add this to our basket. Okay. In, Get her in there. That <laughs> one is a really nice, light, crisp lager. So it's very fresh. It's great with barbecues, with uh, fries and burgers, anything okay. like that. It's mm -hmm. nice and crisp and fresh. The next one is um, the Matt Sleepy Time Stout. <laughs> 
It's made so from nice. Bo's Brewery. And it is amazing with barbecued meats, oh, if you're wow. having ribs or steak or chocolate desserts, because cool. there's a, not a lot of toffee and vanilla mm -hmm. and coffee notes to it. Okay. So it's like a nice alternative to Guinness, sure. but it's got a tiny bit of sweetness to it, which is amazing, mm. amazing with, with food. Okay. So you would never notice unless Ooh. you try these, right? Yeah, you gotta get eyes. in there. I love Bo's Brewery The next well, one. So would be um, the Muskoka Brewery. It's called Detour, and it comes in a six-pack, but you can actually pick one and try it, and mm -hmm. just uh, and try it. It's a light-style lager. Mm -hmm. It's great for the cottage. It's just an easy-drinking lager. Um, mm. Very creamy, very nice. If you're sitting out on the deck, um, it's perfect. Oh, awesome. So there's Muskoka. Let's get it in there. <laughs> and uh, the next one I suggest is called, it's made by Amsterdam Brewery, mm -hmm. and this one is called Orange Weiss. And it's, I've got three different types. It's got a coriander and three different types of orange peel in it, so it's very citrusy. Oh. And a lot of beer trends right now are going towards mm -hmm. um, an orange slice on the edge yes. of the glass instead yes, of I've lime. Yes, i that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's a really interesting one. Okay, you can try to get that in there. We'll try and get it in. We're gonna try. The next one we've got is the festive, um, Bose Festive. Mm -hmm. which is an, a nice a light crisp beer again mm -hmm. uh, but it's got a lot of hops to it so it's quite rich and hoppy okay which is nice a lot of I find a lot of women are tending to go towards more hoppier beers a little bit yeah. of a bite to it okay All I right. don't want to put that in there yeah. in case it so falls through. That. the go. last one it to try would definitely be a fruit based beer right. and I'm suggesting the Mill Street Belgian cherry ale mm. so it's a top fermented beer with a cherry with like a Kirsch type beer a German okay. style yes. Kirsch yes. beer mm -hmm. or Belgian style Kirsch, Bel Belgium, Kirsch beer yep. with uh, Ontario cherries. So fresh Ontario organic cherries Wild. in this beer and it's delicious. So with any kind of dessert, if you're having, you know, strawberry dessert or cherry desserts, mm -hmm. pie, cherry pie in the backyard oh in the summertime, it's perfect. Me. So All you've right. got a real yeah, variety right of on Ontario craft beers, How which is really fun. interesting. So there's so much out there. Yeah, and that's the thing. So you can even get into the bigger containers in your backyard and just you know, get a full of ice and just put in all yes. kinds of different beer. So yes. obviously there's been, the, we, you know, last year we were talking about the iced tea beers and the lemon beers. So there's, those are still, those, those are, are still people huge are liking those. trends, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and the ciders again, Leslie, like the Summer's Bee also has a cider out yes. that's just got a big, uh, it's a 12 pack now. We mm -hmm. get all different flavor profiles. So mm -hmm. it's, the, the world is your oyster, yeah. really, in, in the world well, of beer and you know what? cider. This is awesome. This is fun. So again, you can just come in, and shop, go crazy, and try all kinds of different things. Try different ciders, different craft beers, yeah. and uh, have fun this summer. And of course, be responsible. And that's one thing yes. you uh, message you that's, are I'm very, always saying. very strong. We feel very strongly about that yes. at the LCBO. Be a good host and serve lots of uh, non-alcoholic drinks. Make sure amongst all of these in the in the there's, a couple there's of some nice, uh, bottles of water and uh, lots of hydration. High hydration for everybody else. This summer. And food. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's it for now. Always great being with you, Jillian. That's you it from the Thanks, LCBO Leslie. Millcraft in Burlington. We'll be back with more chair at home. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color. I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Tara, where color lives. Heritage Perennials, look for us in the blue pots. Good morning, welcome back to Terra at Home. I'm here with Daniel from Haunted Hamilton and all of a sudden it changes everything when you walk in the room, Daniel. <laughs> because it's we know bad. we're about to get into some really cool things. So tell me how Haunted Hamilton came to be. Uh, the ironic part of Haunted Hamilton is it actually technically started in Toronto. <laughs> Living out there for <laughs> a year. Right, and, right. Uh, 
I got an EVP, which is a ghost sound on tape. Uh -huh. oh, this and, is like so Ghostbusters. Oh, it, it, and, and you know, it was so like obvious on there. So I wanted to see if anybody was interested in hearing it. Uh -huh. Found another group that was producing a show. The group didn't believe the EVP to be true. However, they told us about a house in Hamilton on Hamilton Mountain, it was called mm -hmm. Bellevue Mansion. Uh-huh, yes, and, I know But they that. wouldn't tell us where it was because they wanted to be the first ones to investigate of it. Of course. Move back to Hamilton and being a uh, true Hamiltonian, it only took a week to find the house. <laughs> and when, I, when we did, uh, mm -hmm. we took some pictures of it, found out the legends of murdered families and de demonic possessions were all fake. However, the pictures we got would end up being the last ones because in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. uh, the landowner came and demolished the 1800s house. So at this point, oh. wanted to post the story, wanted to post the pictures, yes. and Haunted Hamilton was created from that. Oh, that is kinda, so cool. Yeah. Because I remember we talked about that as kids, being I grew up in the Hamilton Mountain, we used to talk about that house, and so all that demonic stuff isn't true then, eh? You broke my heart. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there's, no, there's no record of it. Right. There's no record of it. So well, I, I don't know if it's... Oh, we had stories. Oh, boy, did we <laughs> ever. And sure. it's funny how that's, you know, stuff does come from that when your kids are sitting around and chatting and you just build on it, right? But you have the real stuff. You you stop at where it's, you know, where the truth is and you stop it there, right? And before people kind of branch off. So True. tell me a little bit. I mean, we have all kinds of stories we could talk about in the you know, surrounding areas, but um, let's talk a little bit about what we have on the table here right now and, and, and how, you, again, you were talking about this EVP and how you're getting all of this, but how does this come to be? Now, this, the stuff we see here mm -hmm. is sort of lopsided a little bit. I try and keep the spiritual and the scientific mingled as much as possible right. when we do our investigations at okay. the Custom House, for example, right. in the North End, right? <sighs> So we do those nights there and we have all the tools out for people to use. Yes. Now there's more scientific stuff, the sure. blinking lights, it's, it's more fun, right? Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. Now yeah. EMF detector, you mm -hmm. know what this is? Like from the ghost shows? Oh, yeah, of course, yes, yeah. yes. The idea that spirits uh, give off electromagnetic frequencies. Right. Okay, now you always look for wires and pipes, but if there's none of those around mm -hmm. and that little meter goes off to the top, mm -hmm. well, it's kind of high right now, you never know could be the uh -huh. camera equipment, uh, then you might have something. Uh -huh. That's when you take out your recorders, you take out your cameras, and you take pictures, and you might capture something That's as well. amazing. So it gives you a little bit of an indication you might be in a hot spot. Exactly. Okay, all right. Now this this fancy little device here is a parabolic microphone, uh -huh. yeah. surprisingly made by Slinky. I don't get that one. But, uh, <laughs> I love it. Put the headphone on, you yeah. point, you hit the little trigger, and it enhances the sound so that you can hear things that our normal human hearing can't. Okay. okay. However, you want to be careful if one of your friends has this and you're gossiping about them they will no longer be your friend oh afterwards, yeah all right which good tips you know we need good. to know these things yes. now this one here is uh basically you get this at canadian tire this is a thermometer uh -huh. you point and you shoot a little laser comes out heat seeking exactly <laughs> and uh, we're, we're more like cold seeking actually because <laughs> you're like looking cold for cold seeking. spots right right because they're not they're not they're, they're, they're very cold and unfriendly <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not unfriendly in those cases. It adds to the drama. Come on, Daniel. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't be more dramatic. I always tell myself that. Now, on the back of this, you can see that there's a, um, a, th a temperature. Mm -hmm. So as you scan a room in a supposed haunted location, if there's a drop in that temperature, let's say about five or more degrees, that's okay. really quick. Right. It's known as a cold spot. I just follow the goosebumps on my arms. <laughs> <laughs> that you know that might be your own psychic energy coming could be, through too. Could be. Ooh. You get you get a cold spot, uh -huh. and there's no windows or vents that could be causing it. Right. You might have something. Oh, uh, and then you feel a tap on the back of your shoulder. <laughs> well, it's like uh, you remember the movie Sixth Sense. Yeah. Oh yeah. Remember when he was using the bathroom in the middle of the night, and mm -hmm. something came down the hallway, and you could see his breath. Oh my gosh. That yeah, actually comes totally from there. true paranormal experiences. Really? Yeah. That, that oh. unfortunately did not scare people too much, but that that one's that, that is one's real. Freaky. <laughs> <laughs> now all of this uh, electronic equipment, mm -hmm. but then you got the things that don't need batteries. Mm -hmm. These are the spiritual ones. Right. This deals with the own energy of the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What we have here is a pendulum. Yep. Okay, it's a gemstone on a chain and a pendulum board. Okay. Okay, so you hold one over there, and when it, you ask questions, kind of like the theory of a Ouija board, almost same similar type of thing. You know, people do say that. Yeah. Um, I but try not. not to use that because a Ouija board's different. People have a bad view of it for obvious I reasons. See what you're saying. Uh, this <laughs> isn't the same because it's just your own energy, ah, as where a Ouija board energy. is it's combined, okay. and that True. some people can't control that. Right. That's right. Okay. So you ask yes or no questions. Uh -huh. Swings yes, swings no. Uh -huh. Now the funny thing with this is you'll actually see your hand moving, mm -hmm. but you won't know it's moving. 
which is a little bit strange for some people to get used to. Right. You focus on the gemstone, you mm -hmm. ask the questions, and it will swing, and it'll seem like it's just doing it on its own. Oh, neat. But what we believe it is, it's tapping into your own psychic subconscious. Oh, my goodness. And I'm oh, not cool. psychic at all. Really? So I need so something you, you like need a this. Little, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> neat. Yeah, some people have that psychic abilities. It's just naturally in them, right? So it's almost like a hereditary thing, I think. So. True. I've right? met some uh, interesting psychics mm -hmm. that I couldn't prove them. Mm -hmm to not be the real deal mm -hmm. over the years, mm -hmm. it always amazes me. Wow. It always amazes Okay, me. so let's talk, okay, we're in Waterdown right now, right? Because yep. we're up at this terrible location. So tell me a little Waterdown story. There's actually a famous legend okay. in Waterdown. Uh, not, it's not very often that you get an entire town that has a ghost associated with it. Like mm -hmm. Niagara on the Lake has mm -hmm. Sobbing Sophia, for example. Right, yes. And yes. here in Waterdown, we have the Waterdown Ghost. Very simple name to it. <laughs> uh, he doesn't get to much, much more than that. <laughs> and, and no frills here. Right, okay? right. Now, this dates back to 1934. Okay. And there was a drought going on. And during the summer, uh, a man named Mr. Hood is driving home with his family, mm -hmm. going through the country roads, and his entire family sees a seven foot tall figure standing in the field. It's shaped like a man. Okay. And then it just runs into the woods and it's gone. Seven feet. So Mr. Hood tells the entire town, and take much for a secret to get out. Right. And then the entire town's scared of the, they call it the wraith, which is basically a ghost. Yes. And the entire town now starts reporting to the, to the constable that we're seeing this white figure oh everywhere. It gets in the newspaper, uh -huh. which gets out to all of southern Ontario, oh and now Waterdown is the main tourist attraction <laughs> for much of southern Ontario. People from uh, even Toronto coming to Waterdown to try and capture a glimpse of How the ghost. funny. Now people were scared of this ghost, mm -hmm. so much so that they were starting to get paranoid. Right. And there's a story of uh, a man, a farmer, mm -hmm. and his wife wanted to play a joke on him, so she dressed up like the wraith, mm -hmm. hid behind a oh, wall, no. and then jumped out and said boo to her husband, wow. who then reacted by grabbing a nearby uh, milk oh, bottle no. and hitting her over the head with it. That's, there's a murder. <laughs> no, no, she lived. She no. lived. <laughs> But it, it was yeah. quite damaging to get him because there was were thick bottles back then. Crazy. Well, Daniel, you know what? I could talk to you for like another 25 minutes about this stuff. We have to have you back on the show again. Maybe That's as we like, get closer, of course, people love to have you around Halloween, don't they? But any time of year you do these cool haunted tours and get information for people love to get our information with you. So people should go onto your website and check it out, right? Definitely, awesome. yes. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Leslie. All right, more Tara at Home for this. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Tara, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. The Hamilton Spectator, at work, at home, or on the go. Read us online, in print, or download us to your e-reader. Get the Hamilton Spectator any way you want it. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We have a Chef Mark back from La Piazza Allegra restaurant in Hamilton. Nice to have you back on the show. Thank you. And uh, what are we preparing today? Uh, we're doing something really neat. We have uh, a duck breast here. Mm -hmm. and what we're going to do is we're going to do a little Sambuca glaze on that. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to do some beets. And I'm just going to scallop the beets and we're going to keep them fresh with a little bit of a, a vinaigrette with it. Awesome. And we're going to plate the duck breast right on top of that. Okay. And it's a really nice dish. This dish is all about balance. Okay. Um, the, the duck breast has a lot of fat in it. Yes. It's a very fatty meat, very oily meat. And the beets have a lot of peppery notes to it. So you get that sweetness of the Sambuca, 
the fatness, and then you got oh, the peppery nice. nose. So it really comes along nicely. Okay. Now for this one, I'm going to wear a glove just because I don't want my hands stained right. purple okay. all day. But uh, but it's so nice because I mean, this time of year we have you know access to our garden to be to be getting beets and uh, exactly, and and they're so good for you. I love them. I love the earthy taste. That you get from beets? Yeah, they're very nice. And mm -hmm. like I said, you know, when you when you enhance that peppery note that already yes. comes with it, mm -hmm. um, it really it adds a nice uh, complexity to this dish because of the duck. And duck likes to have sweet and also likes to have spicy. Right. So you, you get a balance and you get a real nice uh, flavor out of both of them. So you are you haven't uh, done anything else to this beet at this point. Nope. You're just peeling it raw. I'm just peeling it raw. Okay. Now what's important is you can do this with a knife. It is somewhat difficult to do with a knife. So we do have our mandolin here yeah, today. I can imagine. <laughs> and with the mandolin, you get to control the thickness of it. So mm -hmm. I'm going to keep it nice and thin, and I'm just shaving this. So we have some nice oh, shaved. Nice. You can see that this one is almost like a candy stripe. Yes, it I is. I mean, it's got a. Mm -hmm. Nice color in that. Now I'm going to get this one into a marinating bowl. Okay. Because I want to start marinating it right away. Because you do want some of that acidity to soak in. So mm -hmm. we have some apple cider vinegar in here. Okay. We're going to add more pepper to in increase that peppery flavor. Mm -hmm. Pinch of salt. And then we just have some oil. And we're going to add a touch of oil to that. I like the simplicity of the ingredients. Really, it's not. Uh, it's amazing how There's you. There's nothing to it. Yeah. You just use, as you say, the, what it already naturally is and enhance it. Exactly. Now, if you leave this overnight, mm. you will get a little bit more flavor and the beets sure. will soften up. Very similar to when you pickle beets and right. stuff. Mm -hmm. So it, this one might be a little bit firm, but I like the crunchiness of it. I mm -hmm. think it adds a real nice um, uh, flavor and crunchiness to the mm -hmm. dish. So now mm -hmm. we're going to take our duck breast. Now, this is what duck breast normally comes and looks like. You do want to trim some of this fat. Okay. okay, this is a fair amount of fat on this. Yes. So I'm going to take a little bit of this fat right off of this duck breast. Yeah, wow, look at that. There you go. Now, a lot of people hang on to that. You render it down. You can make some nice um, stocks and soups out of it. Oh, sure. People use duck fat for everything these days. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's just got such great flavor. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to score the duck breast. This helps it from curling over. Right. I'm going to put it into a pan. Now, what I've done is I've put a pan on dry. Because there's so much fat in that, you don't need anything, don't need right? anything into that. Okay. I'm going to salt this side. Now, you have to be careful when you're, when you're cooking duck because you can overcook it pretty easily, right? Um, when it's as thick as this one is, it'll take a little bit of time, so right. you have it's a little bit more forgiving. But if it is a thinner duck breast, mm -hmm. definitely have to be ca uh, careful because as it cooks, it does get tough. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you want to cook it. I would say, you know, medium rare is perfect. Rare to medium rare is perfect. Mm -hmm. Once you get beyond that, like I said, it starts toughening up. Yeah. Um, if you're going to cook it beyond that, if you don't like eating meat like that, then you have to put it in the oven and then braise it. You put it okay. some sort of a, a liquid sure. with it and braise it down. All right. That makes sense. So you can see how much fat's coming off of that yes, alone. very quickly. And like I said, that was a nice dry pan. Mm -hmm. Now, the only thing you have to be careful with this dish is you don't put in the Sambuca too early because okay. the Sambuca has a lot of sugar. So the minute the sugar hits that kind of heat, it wants to caramelize. It wants to get very, very thick oh, very quickly. Right. And if you do that, it will burn. Okay? <laughs> it will <laughs> burn. <laughs> now, when we do put in the Sambuca near the end, it will flare up, so mm -hmm. you got to be aware that you know that is going to happen. Right. So just be careful. Make sure you don't have any low-hanging yeah. things over your stove <laughs> or anything like that. But you see all that beautiful fat coming mm -hmm. off of that. Now, how many people would you would that serve? Because that's a pretty big piece of meat. This one here, you can do um, if you serve this as an appetizer or maybe a light lunch, something like that. Mm -hmm. You've got two at least, even sure. three. Yeah. Because I mean, it is a fairly large breast. I, I, and it's I a pretty rich meat too, right? It is. Sometimes people don't need as much when it comes to duck That's as right. other meat. So they would That's right. Mm -hmm. So you can yeah, see how that so just good. caramelized up nicely there oh, and got all crispy. So <laughs> Crisp that nicely, doesn't it? It does. It's really, really good. But this is where, now this is where you have to be careful because what you'll see is as it cooks, mm -hmm. it'll start creeping up the side. So you just want to yes. keep an eye on that. Okay. 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 So you mm -hmm. do have the right temperature on that. Mm -hmm. So I'm noticing that you really don't have any obvious um, 
like a heavy carb with this dinner at all. With this meal, you're, you're doing beets and that, and that's yeah, enough. Just right? a you nice, say, everything's balanced. Yeah, nice balanced uh, a meal, uh, very light. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, you got a little bit of um, heaviness with the, the duck itself right. and the savoriness so. of that. But for the most part, it is a nice light way of doing a lunch mm -hmm. outside or something like sure. that. You don't and a lot of times in the summer, generally people are gravitating towards, and it's amazing, uh, you know, especially here in, in Canada and Southern Ontario, we, we, are, we really change how we eat, specifically we to the season. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously what's provided to us locally, but also, I mean, we eat heavier, heartier meals in the winter. We just naturally do. And uh, in the summer, we kind of start to go towards lighter fare, less carbs, heavy carbs more salads, more vegetables, and things like that, so, yeah. It, it, it's, you know what, I think that once the heat starts coming, just, nobody wants that. Yeah, you you know, as, heavy, as good right? as Asabuco is, yeah. it's a little heavy for the summer. you're not sweater on afterwards. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. That's right. Not wearing your track pants. <laughs> so I turned it on this side, so I get the sear on all sides. Oh, that's amazing. But like so I said. you're going to continue to cook it just like that. Are you putting it in the oven for a little bit? You don't need you to don't with need this to. one. Nope, nope. We're going to slice it and put it right on the plate. Okay, so what we'll do is uh, we'll continue to let this cook. We'll take a quick break. Um, we'll come back, and then you're going to plate it all up and make it look so beautiful, because I know you're going to be on what I can just imagine Sounds what good. you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll be right back with more Terracol. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Terra. Make your dreams come true at Terra, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're back with Chef Mark and uh, we are finishing up our lovely uh, duck breast that uh, you yeah. were preparing and it's totally coming together now. You can see that it's, uh, that looks good. It's beautiful, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's caramelized. You have some nice crispiness on that skin. So what I'm going to do now is I have some Sambuca and this is the part I said right. you have to be careful with because it will flare up. Mm -hmm. There you go. Watch that hairspray in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to let that Sambuca start to caramelize on the bottom of the skin there. And that will give it a nice little bit of a crust and some sweetness to it. And you see it gives a nice glaze. It gives a yes. nice shine and it really coats nicely. Mm. Gives amazing. that licorice flavor. How something as simple as that eh, can do. <laughs> now we're going to just lower that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lower that and I'm going to slice the duck breast. Great. And there you go. That's, That's a nice perfect. medium rare. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. What we'll do is we'll take our beets, mm -hmm. and it's up to you how you want to do it. I'm going to fan them on the bottom of the plate here. Okay. I just want to remind people while you're while you're doing this that uh, you can uh, log on to terragreenhouses.com for all these wonderful recipes, and it's nice because of course you have this amazing restaurant in Hamilton, and Thank we can you. go there and let you prepare. But if we want to attempt any of this at home, it's also nice to. Uh, Try you're sharing some of your secrets with us. So no problem. Oh, look at that. That's great. And we'll put another piece on there, a nice thick one there. Then we'll take a little Beautiful. bit of that caramelized sambuca. Mm -hmm. Drizzle a little Beautiful bit on bit. top. And there we go. And we have a sambuca glazed. Beautiful. Here, let's put that out there for everyone to see. What a great dish. Try that on the weekend. See if you can pull it off. Thank you so much, Chef Mark. We Thank really you. appreciate it. That's it for Terra at Home. Have yourself a good one.